me downs. These trees were planted to remember those lives that were lost in the New Cross massacre on the 18th of January 1981. Andrew Gooding, Patricia Johnson, Glenn Powell, Yvonne Ruddock, whose 16th birthday party it was, Patrick Cummings, Lillian Rosalind Henry, Jerry Paul Francis, Steve Collins, Humphrey Brown, Peter Campbell, Lloyd Hall, Paul Ruddock, Owen Wesley Thompson, and a 14th person, Anthony Burbeck, who was lost after the fire. We do remember them, and there are many people still mourning their loss. The pain and suffering from this incident is still so raw. This is Hackney, and we are part of that black community. And when these trees were planted, it was to stand in solidarity with the families, with the community. The origin of the fire is very much a point of controversy. There was a fire in an area where there had been formed for racist attacks, attacking community locations with firebombs. There have been several youth clubs that have been burnt to the ground and there had been many examples of racial tension in the area. So this 16th birthday party, when a fire broke out, there, there was very much a feeling that this was a racist attack. There are some people that say that it was, there are some people say that it wasn't. But in the first inquest and in the second inquest, there were many questions that were left unanswered. It was a terrible tragedy that should have been treated with um, compassion and there should have been a proper investigation into what occurred. There was no condolence and, and the way that the police were being reported to be bullying and harassing the community. The impression I get was that they were putting it across as it was your fault. Today would be the 40th anniversary of the Black People's Day of Action. This was a march that was organised from across the country as a way of calling out the inaction an outrageous response from the state and the police. 20,000 people marching to Parliament from Lewisham. The march was actually attacked by the police and the media reported it as a riot. Thatcher's government's response was to implement Operation Swamp 81. This is very much an attack on black people, ethnic minorities, basically swamping the community with police and randomly stopping and searching black people in large numbers. By April 1981, there were riots across the country. We call them uprisings because this was an uprising to defend our human rights against brutality of the state and the police at the time. When Scarman made his report, he was just focused on Brixton. There was no acknowledgement of what had been happening in Lewisham. There was no mention of the fire. This is part of the legacy of how uh, people of African descent, we, you know, black people, have been treated in a way that is institutionally racist. The reporting from the media criminalised black people and that has been built and built and built upon to the point where, you know, stereotypical images, sub, um, unconscious bias is very much set in people's mindset. So part of what we want to do is to have an inquiry to look at the state response, the institutionalised racism that is still perpetrated today with the police through the criminal justice system, through immigration, through housing, through health inequalities, through education, disproportionate exclusions. It's just another example of how this manifests itself. And so it's really important for us to be aware of our history. If we're going to have a new Race Equality Act. We need to build that Race Equality Act founded on making sense of the past, being able to identify how institutional racism has become so deeply embedded into British culture. On the 30th anniversary, Boris Johnson was the Mayor of London, claimed he didn't know about this fire. Well, you should know about the fire. And whether you knew or you didn't know, why wouldn't you go to a ceremony to commemorate those lives that were lost? I just want to big up Tree Musketeers and thank the woman that took the time and effort to create the ironwork. We need to have justice. We need some answers to the questions. Why was there no condolences? Why was it acceptable for the police to think that they could treat the community in that way? 
Why was the state's response such a brutal and racialized attack? Why did those lives not matter? 40 years later, 13 dead, still nothing said. This has to change if we are going to sincerely and genuinely tackle race equality and structural institutional racism in this country today.